Good morning and welcome to this service from the Lincoln Methodist Circuit. I'm Reverend Sandy Osgoby and this is my husband Ralph and we're going to be leading the worship together this morning. Our call to worship comes from 1 John chapter 4. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Our opening song is So freely flows the endless love you gave to me. So freely flows the endless love you give to me. So freely, not dependent on my part, as I am reaching out.
We come to our opening prayers now, and there is a prayer of praise, followed by a prayer of confession with a response. And then we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer in whatever version you are comfortable with. So may we pray. Lord God, we praise you for your great love surrounds us wherever we go. You are love and all love comes from you. You made people with the ability to love one another. The Bible is full of stories telling how people have shared love and friendship. We can understand your love more clearly when we see Jesus. You sent him to live among us and to die for us so that we might be forgiven for the wrong things that we have done. Your Holy Spirit lives in our hearts, giving us the courage to tell others that Jesus is our Lord. Although we have never seen you, we can show that we love you by loving one another. And because you love us so much, we do not need to fear for the future. We can be confident that whatever happens, you will never stop loving us and you will keep us safe. Amen. Amen. In our prayer of confession, when I say, Lord, have mercy, can you respond with, Lord, have mercy? Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we know that we often get things wrong, and so we come to confess our shortcomings. Lord God, you have made us for yourself and long for our love. Forgive our reluctance to respond to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Christ, you bring us healing and forgiveness. Forgive our unwillingness to accept your gifts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Spirit, you come to us with new life. Forgive our desire to cling on to old ways. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our merciful God has put away our sin. Let us take hold of this forgiveness and live in confidence and in peace. Amen. Amen. And so we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Deliver us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 15. Verses 1 to 8. Jesus, the real vine. I am the real vine, and my Father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and he prunes every branch that does bear fruit, so that it will be clean and bear more fruit. You have been made clean already by the teaching I have given you. Remain united to me and I will remain united to you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can do so only if it remains in the vine. In the same way, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. Whoever does not remain in me is thrown out like a branch and dries up. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire where they are burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you will ask for anything you wish and you shall have it. My Father's glory is shown by your bearing much fruit and in this way you become my disciples. Amen. Our next hymn is You Are the Vine and We Are the Branches. Mm -hmm. 
So, you're the gardener, Sandy. Are you going to tell us all about how to prune a grapevine? Well, I could do in great detail. But really, all you need to know is that it takes a lot of pruning. Twice a year at least, and then you can do all that finicky stuff uh, to make sure that you produce really good grapes. After all, Jesus says, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So it's not a once in a lifetime thing, it's an ongoing process. But I think today we should concentrate on the remaining or abiding in him. Uh, and that makes me think about feeding. I don't remember feeding coming up in the passage. Well, that's because it didn't. 
Um, and let's face it, if Jesus is the vine, we don't need to feed him. No, but we are the branches. Uh, so if we remain connected in him, it's like, you know, the sap bringing the food to us. Exactly. That's right. Um, so it's a case of how do we remain connected? Well, our, our connection with Jesus is like any other relationship, isn't it? It takes time and effort. Time to pray, time to read our Bibles, time to worship, to share in the Lord's Supper, all that kind of thing. Yes, it always comes back to these ancient practices. It's simple, really. It's just a case of making uh, Jesus a big priority in our lives. That's the difficult bit. Yeah, because I start the day with the Bible passages and some, uh, some notes from the book, those books you can get. Uh, and I do that even before getting out of bed. So that's great for me. It is, and you're really good at it. Um, I'm just not a morning person. So I know you read it all aloud so that I can join in. And I must confess that actually, more often than not, I go to sleep again. <sighs> so that's why I like to do my Bible reading and thinking and praying after breakfast when I'm a bit more awake. Yeah, it doesn't really matter when we do things, do we? No. As long as we always do it. Well, as long as we do do it, yes. I mean, I like to go to my shed where I'm not disturbed in the evening and have a quiet time with God then. But it's good to remember him, you know, sort of at lunchtime and bedtime as well. Yeah, I'm really enjoying learning about the Bible through that Bible in one year, you know. I mm. love the commentary from Nicky Gumbel um, because he's helping to create the links between the Old Testament and New Testament. Mm. And it's great that we can do that together over lunch. It is, yeah. I'm so glad a friend told us about that um, because I just love the way David Suchet, who does the reading for it, makes the genealogies sound wonderful. Mm. And all those really boring, repetitive bits in the Old Testament just sound fascinating when he reads them. Yeah, it's really good. So perhaps you could tell people how to get that. Oh, well, it's really quite simple. All you need to do on your iPad or on your tablet or on your phone or on your PC, just go to Bible in one year, all one word, dot org, Bible in one year dot org, and it'll tell you there exactly what to do. It'll even give you buttons to download to your iPad, your tablet or your iPhone or your PC. And then you go from there. And the day you register is day one of Bible in one year. And every day it'll bring up the next day's Bible reading for you. So it's quite yeah. simple. It's all part of that rhythm of prayer and worship and thanksgiving. It's, it's a bit like that obelisk you made me for the garden. Well, oh, you've lost me now. Well, when we first moved back to Washington, the front garden was really overgrown. But in amongst the weeds and the bushes, I found that lovely purple clematis. But you could hardly see it. So you built me that lovely big obelisk. Mm -hmm. I pruned that vine, uh, that's the clematis, <laughs> really, really hard, gave it a good feed and away it romped up that obelisk. And now in the summer, it has that gorgeous display mm -hmm. of all those lovely cascading purple flowers. It's fabulous. So a rhythm of prayer and worship is a structure, a bit like an obelisk, that helps us to grow and flourish and be fruitful. Right, I see what you mean now. Yeah, and I find that as long as I keep that structure of regular prayer times throughout the day, even if it's just as simple as saying the Lord's Prayer while I'm making the sandwiches, it keeps my focus on God. And that means I do a lot more of those arrow type of prayers. You know, the short ones about, oh, please help so-and-so or thank you for this or, you know, bless whatever. Um, and somehow I find that if I keep to that rhythm, the whole day seems to go a lot better. Right. But do you always keep to that rhythm? Well, I should love to say, yes, I do. But I don't. Um, you know, there's some days there's just so much to fit in that that rhythm gets lost. And, you know, if I'm tired in the evening, quite frankly, sometimes I just can't be bothered. 
Um, and then, you know, when you're grieving or feeling ill or a bit anxious about something, you know, we, we just can't pray at times. And that's why I find it helpful to have a written form of prayer so that when it's impossible to pray, I can at least read the words, even if I'm not feeling anything. It's a bit like watching the kingfishers. Yeah. You saw a kingfisher the other day, didn't you, on the South I Dove? Did. Yeah. But I don't understand what kingfishers have got to do about prayer. Well, let me read you a little poem by Anne Lewin called Watching for the Kingfisher. Prayer is like watching for the kingfisher. All you can do is be where he is likely to appear and wait. Often, nothing much happens. There is space, silence and expectancy. No visible sign, only the knowledge that he's been there and may come again. Seeing or not seeing cease to matter. You have been prepared. But sometimes, when you've almost stopped expecting it, a flash of brightness gives encouragement. So, you see, we can't make God turn up. We can't magic up a sense of Jesus's presence Look, with a, us. Just like that. Doesn't no. work, does it? Doesn't work like that. Mm. So, you know, on those times when it feels like he's gone missing, um, the best thing to do is to put yourself where he's likely to appear. So, you know, he's told us those places in the pages of the Bible as we read his word, in our prayers, in our worship, when we're singing our hymns. Um, you know, whether we're doing it alone or together, those are the places that he's likely to appear. And of course, when we can, when we share in the Lord's Supper. Um, of course, he turns up in other places at other times too. But that rhythm of prayer and praise and thanksgiving, uh, when we're on our own, when we're together physically or on Zoom, that's how we remain in him, how we abide in him, how he comes to meet us. Mm -hmm. But even when we do that, sometimes it's very dry and very boring and nothing's happening. And you just wonder, does God really exist? Mm, I know the feeling. It's all very true. But I think we need to remember that Jesus told us to look at the natural world because he teaches us about himself through that. So if you look at a vine, half the year it looks dead. Yeah, it's just their branches there, that's it, nothing else. And then the leaves come and the flowers and the fruit, and then it looks dead again. So, you know, it won't, if you plant a vine, it's not going to produce tons of fruit in its first year. It will take many seasons, many seasons, before it comes to full maturity and bears really good, luscious fruit in plenty. And it's just the same for us. Our spiritual growth is seasonal too. So, you know, we don't need to panic when it feels like God's gone AWOL. You know, he hasn't. It's just that we're in a bit of a dormant season. And that sense of his presence will return in due season. Yes, and in a fruitful season, when we meet him regularly and allow him to work in us and through us, that's when we bear the fruit, isn't it, of the spirit and people can catch a glimpse of God's glory. They can see where his followers. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Anything else do you want to talk about? Well, I think we should just mention that little bit about ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Because over the years, I've known a number of people who've taken that as God's promise and asked and nothing's happened. Uh, it hasn't been done for them. And they've ended up discouraged or disappointed and in some cases have actually given up on faith altogether. Yeah, it's really important that bit about um, ask for whatever you wish and it'll be done for you because it's you need to look at that in its context, don't you? Mm. Because otherwise, if you take the text out of context, you just end up with con. Yeah. And so it's no good praying to win the lottery or for that person at work or that neighbour 
who's really making your life hell to drop dead because God's just not going to answer that, is he? No. That's not the sort of prayer that you get a yes for. No. So we need to remember that the verse actually says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Mm. It's only when we remain in the vine, in Jesus, that we can begin to understand the kind of prayers he wants us to think. So rather than praying for a lottery win, we should be praying that we have sufficient for our needs and that we have the wisdom to use our resources wisely. And instead of praying for that awful person to drop dead, we should actually be praying God's blessings into their lives mm. and go out of our way to be kind and generous and lovely to them. And that is really hard and it can be painful. But then who said being a Christian was going to be easy? So, you know, it's all part of producing fruit on your branch. Yeah. <clears throat> so to sum up, remaining in the vine connected to Jesus is of vital importance uh, in our Christian life because what that helps us do is a rhythm of life, prayer, Bible study uh, and worship. And that could be on our own or with other people. Yeah, we just need to keep that rhythm yeah. and, you know, Keep God's promises in their context so that we won't be disappointed. Yeah, I agree. So is there anything else we should say about this passage? Oh, tons and tons. But I think that will probably do for today. I think I'll agree with you there. We come now to our prayers of concern. There is no response during this prayer. But after each section, there will be a few moments of silence in case anything has come to your mind and you wish to bring it before the Lord. So may we pray. Lord Jesus, you are the vine and we are the branches. And we are surrounded by the love sent from our Heavenly Father. Feed us, we pray, with that love so that we may show it by bearing fruit for you as we pray for others. We pray for those in power across the world, for those that share good things with the majority rather than just the minority. But we also pray for those that wield power unjustly. May they see that this will bear no fruit and may lead to their branch being discarded. We pray for our own government at this time of difficulty, for the work they've done in leading our nation out of lockdown. It's like new growth springing from a harsh winter. As the local elections draw near, may the candidates and the people use their voices in the name of love rather than hate. Lord Jesus, we think of those whose lives are full of grief for loved ones who have either been very sick or have passed on from this life. Let your peace descend on them, we pray, and take them by your healing hand. For each one of us, Lord Jesus, see into our hearts and allow the gardener to give us a tender loving prune so that we may grow, blossom and bear good fruit for you for always. Amen. And now we sing our final song, Then Sings My Soul. How great thou art. I 
So as we leave our worship together, may we abide with God, grafted and rooted and pruned. Lord, help us to stay connected to one another and to you, bearing fruit wherever your love takes us. So may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon us 
and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>